Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to the channel. You know where you're at, Deb Chanel Sports World, where we get down with the girls' crews, okay? I can just tell you I love them all, except for two of them, okay? Maya is at the least. It, she, she was she was ahead of Chili. Now Chili done grew back on me a little bit. She showed me another side to her that's willing to accept, you know, a man in her life. But she's just got to get rid of this. She know what type of man she wants. She don't. She don't, Lord. She don't. Help her out, Jesus. Help her out. Clear her heart and her mind because she don't know what kind of man she wants. But I loved her on season one. And I hope she get I hope the Kim gets a season two. But I liked her more so in this episode. She's shining a little bit. But that damn Maya, she can just get on off the boat. She done had two times to act right and she refused to. She act like an airhead person. But we'll get back to Maya, okay? Cause we we ain't stuck on her. But my two ride and eye chicks, I'm telling besides Lil' Kim. Oh, boy, I wish I could party with them or when I was their age. Because we would just be having fun, fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. A little rest. Then we go back to having fun, fun, fun. And it's not all about, you know, showing your assets and floating and, and fronting with guys. It's just they had this really sisterhood that Kim has definitely tried to foster among all of the women on the trip, including Charlie. Yes, let's not forget Charlie. He is such a sweetheart. Such a sweetheart. Him and uh, Tiffany, I can see why Kim keeps him very close to her. Because they are peachy king together, those three. But V and B Simone. <laughs> I mean, let's party, party, party. Let's party, party, party. Let's have a good time. Yes. Them road dogs right there. So I can see why Kim get down seriously with Miss Tiffany that she don't know for 18 years. I didn't know that. So I'm like, when you got friends like that that's ride or die with you when you was in jail and all that, and they still around, girl. Yeah, you keep them day or deep, deep with you, Okay. And then Charlie, I don't know how many years. I'm going to say he 18 plus two. Because it seemed like Charlie and Kim and Tiffany have a more stronger bond than she do with Maya. I mean, Kim do with Maya, um, V, Pretty V, and um, B. Simone. But, it, you know, she said she knew him from childhood. So, I'm like, well, at least she said it about Tiffany. So, I mean, things like that. I mean, you grow up and you can keep a friendship from childhood. Oh, that's one. That's one, honey. That's one. Ride or die with them, honey. Ride or die with them. But yeah, honey, my again was very disappointing. I wish a, a, a jet would come and just pick her up. Because I, I just don't know what's going on with that woman. She, she one hand, she telling you, um, she, you know, she's acting like she's all high class and her parents had her into dance classes, exercise classes. You know, she had to go and be a part of this uh, whatever competition and stuff. She didn't get a chance to make friends and be around girls to actually have a a uh, relationship with them in a sense of bonding and unity. That lie. You know, because then at the side of her mouth, she was on an exercise machine and she was having this conversation with Miss Pretty V. And Miss Pretty V was like, okay, girl, I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. You know, told me this sob story. And, you know, I had one too, but you're not bounce back. You just get with good people and you live life to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? No regrets. No regrets. But, she, you know, Maya was telling her, yeah, I didn't have that bonding thing. Like, she was acting, honey. I was like, Maya, I can see through you, honey. You, was, you are not transparent at all. You just like Casper the Goat. You can see right through you. You just full of shit, okay? Because the same thing she was saying was one story or she was privileged and she was sheltered and this, that, and that. She didn't get a chance to be around the girls and, and you know, just, you know, be a uh, friendships with other girls or women at a time. 
And then on the other hand, she's going to talk about, well, I didn't come from the best upbringing. You know, we was, she trying to play poor mom, didn't you? And I'm like, girl, were you, were you well off or were you poor? Which one? Which one? Because evidently you was well off because you couldn't go through all those different uh, trainings, you know, being little models of, of, of being in pageants and going to rehearsal to do this and that if your parents somehow didn't have no money to fund all that. So I'm like, which one is it? Was you broke or was you poor? Was you broke or was you poor? Are you, sh- you know, showing us your acting skills or what? I mean, I don't know where you were going with it. I really did. It just, it just knocked the hell out of me. I was like, oh, Maya, you don't know when to stop lying, okay? Just say you forgot the girl's name, or better yet, how I believe, you didn't want to say her name. you jealous of a relationship that her and Kim have, and you just, you know, just acting a fool about it. Just say you didn't want to call her name. You were right. You knew exactly who she was, just like you said. You heard her name so much on the, on the trip that it was just this, and you just got tired of hearing it. And then she's going to lie to her agent or manager on the phone she's gonna call him and call him and say uh well i had this incident uh with the girls and the kim saying like she took her side and just because i forgot well i didn't forget i basically was telling uh introducing the girls after i had this impromptu type of performing here out in the caribbean you know and Trinidad and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, girl, please, impromptu, whether you got on stage and you wanted to get on stage or you got on stage because people pressured you to get on stage, irregardless, you just showed some more of your talent. You could have just not did anything, all right? And it would have been fine. It would have been fine with me because, like I said, the song you sung, I didn't know what, where that come from. Was that an oldie but goodie or that was something new you were bringing out? Either or, either way, it wasn't worth it. Okay, you could have just sat down, had you a few drinks, and just party with the Caribbean people. All right, we didn't have to hear from you. We didn't. Because what you did, like I said, you shouldn't have got it up. All right, it wasn't worth the spiel of you going up on stage in your attire. Because the show wasn't ready and made to do no concert or no performance. But, you know, it is what it is, y'all on a trip. But if with Kim... Could come out there with some theatrical costumes, all this lingerie she floating around in, and you know, you should have did something better too. But that's another hero there. Let's get and talk about the little guys. Little guys was out. Uh, Tobias was calling himself, uh, talking about little Kim, you know, as a friend. But you could tell it could develop in a little bit more because the Kim was feeling him when she went down there to check on seeing what was uh, being cooked up. For today's uh, lunch menu, breakfast, or dinner. I don't know what it was, but she seemed like she could have been a little sweet on Mr. Chocolate Man Tobias, too. But then they got in a little personal uh, conversation where she felt that he wasn't as uh, bubbly bubbly as he normally was on their trip. She wanted to know what was going on. And he went on and divulged to her that his brother finally got out of jail after serving about 9 or 10 years in prison and this, that, and a third, and she's saying she could relate because she went away for about a year and a half, and I like, Kim, a year and a half versus doing nine to ten, that's still a little bit different, but okay, y'all both were incarcerated. <laughs> I don't know about like, that life, and I ain't trying to find out about that life, but okay, you want to be in comparison with having a shorter length of time, you know, being locked up than somebody who's really been locked up. Uh, for some some years, okay, that can change them and, and turn them into something totally different. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay, did you know you do that, Kim? Okay, I give you that pass. I give you that pass. But she was very uplifting to him and telling him, you know, it's, it's good that he got out. You learn from your experience. She even brought little seeds in there about how they were on very bad terms, but then uh, she had to forgive them, you know, because that's the Christ in her. That's what she do. You know what I'm saying? And she's maturing. You know, you can't hold uh, gr- uh, grudges for so long. You can't be mad at somebody because it just, just takes too much energy. And you need to be smiling more than frowning and, and, and uh, planning for somebody else's downfall. It's just too treacherous and too time consuming. We can be praying for, uh, praying for them to be uplifted and to change their demeanor as well as their behavior. Okay. 
attitude adjustment. Everybody needs it, okay, here and there. And, um, you know, she's telling Tobias about how she forgave Lil C's, and they showed us little clips about that, him apologizing to her, and, you know, him making amends, and that was good. That was good. And then we go to where Rome and Tobias and uh, Dredd, I don't know what the guy name is, but B. Simone done nicknamed him Dredd, and that's what we going with. Okay, the men were talking. They were having a little kiki uh, time, and Dredd's or and uh, Tobias was getting on Rome because Rome said he in love with Chili. <laughs> Man, Chili don't want you. And then Tobias hired off. She said, you don't remember when uh, her group was singing this song, they don't want no scrubs. Chili don't want no scrubs. So I'm like, Tobias, are you calling Rome a scrub, honey? Because Rome just looked, I don't know, for him to be that beautiful or handsome of a man, I don't know why he feels like a little bit insecure because, I mean, Chili's not like top dog shelf. You know, uh, she's nice and, you know, she's, you know, kept herself a uh, figure and her personality, you know, on point. But it's just the man that she's looking for. I don't think he's out there. I don't think he exists. You know what I'm saying? And she may be overlooking you. Um, well, you know, you got to make some adjustments. You can't live in Trinidad and try to date Chile. No, you got to be in the States, honey. You got to be in Atlanta more specifically. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, Florida somewhere, honey. Because Chile was like, mm -mm, honey, I had to come through customs to come see you. Nah, I can't deal with that. And, you know, Chile's playing a little hardball there. With setting her standards and this, that, and the third. And she just, to me, I don't really think she's attracted to him. Like she said, she can get attractive men as well as ordinary men. But she likes good eye candy. She likes a, a good looking man. And he has all the aspects on that. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's just he's not in the States and she don't really trust him, you know, being that far out. And try to have a, a, a long distance relationship. Not too many people shouldn't get that. She don't want that. But you be one to touch and feel. You know what I'm saying? You want that person near you. And not just on the telephone or Skype. And so I get where she's coming from. I gave her a little break on that. I said, okay, you you give, you give let me get into your word. Or understand your logical or illogical thinking. You know, because you still be going left sometime. Going south, and I'd be like, pump the brakes because she don't left me again. I don't know where she going with all this bullshit. She trying to give you either want a man or you don't want a man. You either want to try this man out or you don't want to try him out. You know, it's just cut. You know, just just put it. it it's just cut and dry. You know what I'm saying? Don't throw away love if somebody's there trying to be interested in you. And I understand. Take it slow. You know, get to know them. Get some time. Get some, you know some friendship time in, and maybe the friendship will lead into something else. I don't know, okay? Because you got your spirituality, you know, sitting up on Front Street, and I I, I can't say nothing about that because you should put the law up first, all right? But you know, Chili just was doing a little bit too much. She talking about she got her standards, and let's see how her standards done got her thus far. She's still single, am I not right about that? Then she been on several uh, shows displaying wanting love trying to find love and you we still see that she's still in the want and need line okay but uh i, I just think she's playing with them too much instead of her just being totally upfront and honest like look i'm on this girl's trip and i'm trying to have fun I'm not really, I got to have chemistry with somebody. And you and I, we just don't have chemistry. I don't look at you and say, ooh, I want to jump your bones. I want to, you know, have your babies. I want to spend my rest of my life with you. And this is what I can't see because this is a feeling I'm getting for you. It's not love. It just feels like a really strong physical and mentally and spiritual connection I'm having with you. You know, it's, just, it's not like that. I mean, when she look at him, she look at him just like a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could kick it together. And sometimes, you know, when somebody keep being around you and you keep opening up and they keep developing and stuff, you might find an interest. But if it's not like, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, like you like the way he talks, you like the way he walk, you like the way he dress, you like the way he look. You know, just those things just out the bat that you are very attracted to when you first meet them and you have a sit down and have a conversation with them and it's still churning you up, then you know you're attracted to that person. But you know, 
Chili's a beautiful woman, too. He's a beautiful man. So, you know, I guess she feels like, you know, I still can get anybody I think I want. But, you know, that's not necessarily true, Chili, because you're still not taking, baby. You're still not taking. So I'm not throwing him at her, but I'm like, he's a nice little piece of meat to definitely be thinking about. And the babies y'all would have, if you still have your eggs together, they would be gorgeous. But like I said, it got to be some kind of connection. And he's all over you, honey. He wants to marry you and this, that, and third and just lay you out uh, with the red carpet and the flowers and candy and the wedding ring, the honeymoon. And, you know, uh, what wrong do I understand? She's looking for finance and security, too. You know, you just can't come with her come out. Uh, it could have worked maybe 20 years ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she don't got a little age on her now. And she's looking for security. All right. What she say? Ain't no, if it ain't no finance going on, ain't no love making going on here. Okay. That's her stance she got going on. So, Rom, I don't know. You, 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 you're barking up a, a long, long tree. And, and, and she ain't giving you no kind of net to try to reach up to her. Okay? She said, I'm pretty, you pretty. What else you got? <laughs> she ain't messing with that man. Okay? So, he ended up giving her flowers and everything. And he just is what it is. She just really, he was in a little tub boat. And she just punched holes in. And he's just drowning right now. But she threw him a little life jacket so he don't actually drown. He can swim back to the surface. But she like, uh-uh. You you messed up. <laughs> try, try again. Like Aaliyah said, dust yourself off and try again. You can dust yourself off and try again. Try again. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's what she pretty much told Mr. Romy Rom. Now, um, Dre's guy, he just, um, what do you call it? B. Simone is just loving him all in the right places. She likes how he talks. She likes what he looks like. Uh she she just loving the man, you know what I'm saying? She just loving him, and it's just real cute because it's just like first time in love with somebody. That's what she's giving me when it comes to dread. So they seem like they could be a good couple, but if he resides on that boat and he's up, you know, touring and doing tourist things on the boat and uh, I don't know, serving people up, whatever. I don't know how that's going to be because she lives in the states too. <laughs> And then maybe she just want a, a, a flame for how long this little cruise thing is going to be taping and whatever. And then she don't want him out of that. I don't know. Because B. Simone just seems like a very carefree, charismatic type young lady. And, you know, she ain't ready to settle down. But if it happened with Dred's guy, she would be okay with it too. But it's going to take a lot of planning on those on they, both of their parts. Then we got, um, let me see. We got Pretty V. Like, Pretty V ain't got nobody, do she? Let me see. Killer Ken was to buy it. No, Pretty V hadn't called herself stringing on nobody. I know, but she calling her friends from her, uh, at home, telling them she living the life. She eating this type of food. She don't been this type of place. And she just enjoying herself, living it and living it up, okay? Fun girl, fun girl. Uh, Then you got Tiffany. Tiffany and, Char and Charlie are pretty much paired up together. Uh, besides uh, Charlie, he's trying to watch out being like big brother to be Simone because he knows she done been through some stuff and they kind of shared a little uh, sad story amongst them too on the, you know, this uh, this particular uh, sh uh, what do you call it? Episode. Uh, he wasn't really too fond of his mother and dad. I don't know. He didn't really make it clear whether they really were together or they were just leaving him to fend for himself. But he ended up staying with a lot of friends. And, you know, for what was supposed to have been a couple of days, a couple of weeks, it turned into years. So he don't really have a good family dynamic there either. And B. Simone saying she was uh, with, wasn't with her mom because her mom was doing some other stuff. Oh, gosh, she said she was strung out on drugs or whatnot. I'm not quite sure about that because when people start, you know, giving that side of their story, it just hurts my feelings, you know, and I try to be, like, sympathetic and, and, and try to, like, damn, you know, but they don't, you know, they living their life now, so everything 
that she had to go through it that was struggling and, and stressful and hurtful for her in her early years, she done turned that into lemonade and she's living a good life. She done got with some people that have put her on front street and given her more opportunities to where she can, you know, excel and fly and be the person she wants to be and not how life had tried to give her lemonades and try to keep her in a state and state of mind. She made lemonade out of that and started drinking it and doing her time in a good life. You know what I'm saying? So she said her grandmama really raised her and was very supportive uh, for her because her stepmom was very evil, cruel, and all that kind of thing. You know, come, come back and bite people in the butt like that. So you don't have to worry about it. If it don't hit them directly, it will hit them indirectly where it, it somebody else happens. So just let God do what he got to do for them. He can do it better than you ever could think about getting them back. Okay. <sighs> Let's see what we have here. Oh, but if we go back to uh, Maya, Maya is going where she don't know why everybody don't understand her feelings of how she didn't introduce Kim's best friend, Tiffany, to everybody that came to her and saw her performance when she was on that island or wherever that was. Uh, and... Uh, she ain't really telling her manager the true T. He, she, he only getting half of it. Of course, he's going to side with her because she ain't giving the whole full T, the full structure of what actually happened and how she showed her ass. You know what I'm saying? But then again, if you got a manager that's a yes person, they're going to always take up for you regardless instead of sending you down saying, well, did you, did you really have to do it that way? But see, like I said, she didn't really present it to him. She just presented one side, her side of what she wanted to say and not how it really played out. Because I'm sure if somebody gave him a video clip of what happened, he'd be like, girl, you know, you know you were wrong. You know you were wrong. But she always want to blame, you know, other people instead of her actions. I'm like, Maya has been hurt. I don't know who hurt her, but she... She, she's not dealing with a full deck of cards, okay? She need to go sit on somebody's couch and get in somebody's church and get some spirituality going so she can forgive herself and forgive the people that hurt her so she can open up and be more friendly and open to people. Because, you know, when she had said that uh, when the first episode came, she's going to let people... Uh, love her and she was love on her and she was gonna love on people. You know that went in the water. That died in the water because we hadn't seen that. We had seen Maya uh be friendly to anybody. It's just like she's been more accepting to to you being in her space. <laughs> but if she had her way, you would be like peasants. She'll request you or not request you to be around her. It didn't matter to her either way because she only want to be around celebrities or people in the industry. That's why she finds it so well, and she's kind of hooked up with uh, Chili. And, of course, you got Queen B, who asked her to be on the, this show. Because, uh, really, Queen B could have just, you know, went and just, just uh, toured the, the cruise of the world of Caribbean by herself and just made friends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or just took her besties, which is Charlie and Tiffany, along with her. But, like I said, I ain't got nothing against uh Pretty V and B Simone, they can tag along anytime with me. Anytime. That's why I see Kim keep her, her friends close. And she might even keep her enemies close. So you know what I'm saying? Because my seem like a little hater. So you might have to keep her close to see how she really fly. But towards the end of the episode tonight, you know, uh Kim was like, uh uh, you ain't finna put this shit on me. Now, you know, really Tiffany and Charlie had already formed the situation of a uh, scene that they was going to play that was going to really spike Maya or, or, or make Maya think about what she did. Kind of playing a little shade there. So, you know, everybody had came to the dinner table uh, on the ship. And uh, what's her name? Tiffany was a, a little bit late. But when she came, she had on Charlie's hat. And she went on and wrote her name in it so it was just like a pun intended on Maya forgetting her name she had something out front and center where in case Maya did forget about her she could read Tiffany so she could say Tiffany <laughs> you know what I'm saying everybody was on her ass especially uh, Simone B was telling her girl go on just you know give it up say you forgot the girl name but I'm with Maya Maya didn't forget that girl name she was just being shady she was tired of everybody talking about Tiffany how great Tiffany was to Kim and how they grew up and they really really have a good 
bond of friendship and loyalty. And for some reason, Maya don't like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, girl, you're so jealous. You're just really jealous. And I'm sorry, you know, you can't identify uh, with the relationship that Kim has with Tiffany, you know. It just is what it is. Okay, you're not her best friend. You're one of her good friends, but you're not her best friend. Okay, face it. Deal with it. Move on. And I'm mad. You know, you just felt kind of salty about it. And then she tried to explain to everybody what she meant, her true intentions were. And everybody wasn't buying it. And Kim got so upset because Kim felt that she was trying to put the burden on her. Like She knew exactly what and how Maya was going to uh, introduce her. And she was like, uh-uh, don't be salty like that, honey. But see, I, I wouldn't have got up and walked off. I would just read her at the table, okay? And then, you know, we said, do you want a jet to come pick you up? Because we're not going to go on this this cruise of sailing the Caribbean and you act like this. Because I don't need you on board, okay? But Kim is a class act. She said she finds that Maya, she likes her. And she's looking deep, 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 deep down. And, and, and trying to find a place or a spot where she see goodness in Maya, okay? So, but she, um, you know, she got herself gotten a little upset. She wasn't taking that bullshit. She didn't want to hear what Maya was trying to spill out to everybody or why she didn't call her name and why she felt Kim should be the one. This Kim, that's her best friend. She's been knowing her for 18 years. You know, Kim was like, girl, I ain't, I ain't stand what you're talking about, but it's still bullshit. So, she, Kim got up from the table, walked away, and uh, Charlie and Tiffany went to go check on her, and you know, Kim was telling them, you don't know what the hell wrong with Maya, you know, giving her the one, two, three punch out, lights out, and uh, been gone for like say 30 minutes, and they were worried. So, uh, pretty V said, well, no, I think it was Beast of Mom, so you need to go check on them, meaning Maya, because you don't, you, you the wrong that, that messed up everything by forgetting that girl name or not forgetting that girl name, but then try to make stupid excuses of why you did what you did, which still don't make no sense. So, you know, Maya caught herself going up there. And she heard them talking about her. And then she went in. Looked like she wanted to have a crime on. But nobody wanted that. They just wanted her to admit, you know, you were wrong. And Maya ended up saying she was wrong. She could have handled it a lot more better. And they hugged it out. But Maya's still going to be doing shit. I can just tell it. She's going to still be doing crap. Crap like, you know, trying to make somebody lesser than what they are. You know, like she's the star and this, that, and the third. Because, you know, she just played too many roles. I'm like, Maya, you're not a good actress. Stop it, okay? You can sing, but it's more so old songs that I'm grooving with because it's new stuff that you brought out. I, I I didn't get with it. You know, maybe I'm old. I'm too tired and through. I don't know. And I'm just not hearing the flavor that you're giving right now. But, you know, that was it. But I was like how Kim stood up for everybody. She want everybody to have fun. You know, this is an opportunity for women to bond with one another. And, you know, they need to stop acting up. So I, I was really feeling the whole scene and everything that Ken was really trying to, you know, make moves with trying to keep her friends, the ones that she do call and consider friends, together and showcase them. And maybe they can do something after this girl's trip that she was able to put them on and they can do some other reality shows. You know, I don't know, because I'm telling you, she get a season two. She don't definitely need to have Chili or, um, what do you call it, Maya on it. Now, she can continue to keep uh, B. Simone and Pretty B. They cool. Charlie and Tiffany, I'm rolling with. And we got a team right there. Pick up two more people, honey. Pick up two more people. But uh, that was pretty much it, other than they trying to play a prank at the end and really... To me, when Maya was going off on Kim, you know, as in theory, it wasn't for real, but they was trying to make it like it was for real. I think Maya was expressing her true feelings of what she felt. You know how they say when you get drunk, you start saying stuff that's true that you wouldn't wouldn't be able to say when you're uh, coherent and you're sober. But when you get loose and, and, and you feel like you can take on the world and you got all this extra built-in confidence that came from nowhere... You know, when you get drunk and you start telling the truth. And that's what I was thinking Maya was doing. She was being kind of rough and outspoken and they was just playing a prank. But I think those were Maya true feelings. But it is what it is. Like I said, try to keep your enemies much closer than you keep your friends. And then you know how to move. Okay. That's always been my theory. But uh, that's all I had for the girls trip. I was pretty much pleasantly surprised 
with this episode. But like I said, <laughs> Chili, you know, stepped up a little bit. Just a little bit now. But I think she need to really be honest with Rom and just say, it ain't going nowhere. Trust and believe. It just ain't going nowhere. You know, you live too far. You ain't in the States. I can't get with you when I want to get with you. I don't even know if you got a car. You going got you going home. You know, she need to check out his social security number and all his debts before she would probably say, no, you, you're not the one. You don't have enough money for me. <laughs> But Maya, we we just gonna not talk about her no more. Cause if you saw the episode, now I I imply or I implore you to watch the episode. Then you can understand where I'm going with it. it. It's no no need to talk about Maya no more. No more. No more. She needs to be picked up by a jet helicopter. Whoever can get her off that cruise yacht, that big ass beautiful boat, so she can go somewhere else. Cause she she's too much of self. She's too much of loving of self, and she wants all the attention on her. If it, you know, and I'm like, okay, maybe it should have. It may have been a point where it was Lil Kim showing she added Maya and Chili to get more attraction, or uh, people to chime in and come and watch the show. I don't know. She probably did better. Again, um, I don't know. Who's not a rapper? Hell, she could got Fox or Brown or or um. Eve or somebody, I, I don't know, but she she working with what she gave, but she working with what they gave her, you know. I, I'm I'm not sure, but it's both been a friend a friendship trip trip. So she did what she could at what little time she had. All right, bless Cam, bless Cam, prosper for Cam. May she be very prosperous, okay? Because I, you know, I've always always liked the little Kim and, and her little theatrics and her rapping skills, you know, but she's given me a more full, well rounded look into her life, okay? And I like that. I like that. Very pleased. Very pleased. But that's all I have for this uh, review. Hopefully, y'all liked it. Y'all will stay tuned because I ain't know they're going to give an episode four behind. They don't scrape up an episode four. Yeah, maybe they got eight out there. For season one, but they're just trying to see if it's getting a lot of traction. There's a lot of people tuning in, you know, uh, actually watching the show and liking it. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that would have worked. When I first looked at it and looked up the credits or how many uh, episodes they had, they only had three. They only had three, but honey, I see four. It's untitled. Or did it was a title? Let me see. I, cause I thought I wrote it down. Uh, no, nah, it wasn't titled. It wasn't titled. But uh, this season. Uh, I mean, it's an episode four, so we'll see. We'll see, honey. I'll be back. I like girl's thrill. I hope she gets the second season, because I'll be reviewing it, honey. I sure will. I just don't want Maya on it. Mm-mm. Maya need to go strike up a fire or eyes, throw eyes in the fire somewhere else. Mm-mm. It's making her look bad. It's making her look worse. So, you know, I'm forgetting about her right now. I am forgetting about her. All right. Like I said, Chili, she just needs to be worked on. We need to pray for Chili to let the Lord intervene with finding her husband. Because she don't know what she wants. Lord, she don't know what she wants. Okay, but that's all I had. Peace and blessings to you all. And I'll see y'all next video. Take care. Bye.